Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. Today, we are starting a sub-series of our big series entitled Real Estate Fundamentals You Should Know. Our sub-series is all about the financing contingency, Form 22A. Today's video is going to look at paragraph one of Form 22A. With paragraph one, the buyer identifies the type of loan and the amount of down payment that will trigger their good faith requirement to obtain financing. And if they're unable to obtain the financing identified in the Form 22A, then they'll recover their earnest money. They'll have a, they'll have a legal excuse for failing to close the transaction, assuming they fulfill all the other requirements of the financing contingency. So let's talk just about the buyer's requirement to identify the type of loan they're getting and their amount of down payment. Buyer has a variety of check boxes that they can choose from. Buyers should, of course, do a good job working with their lender before they ever make an offer so they know which type of loan they're going to be getting, or at least not more than, you know, a couple types of loans. If, for example, they're not sure between an FHA or a conventional, it might depend on the property itself, then they could check both boxes, but it would be ridiculous for any listing broker to advise a seller to accept an offer if, for example, every box was checked, because that would indicate a buyer who had no idea how they were going to finance the purchase of the property. But let's just assume that a buyer marks the conventional box and then says that they are going to put 10% down and seller accepts that offer. The language below that, still part of the first paragraph, says that buyer must make loan application within five days following mutual acceptance. Sometimes buyers will go in and make some form of loan application, maybe seeking underwriting approval prior to purchase, prior to mutual acceptance. That's not the same as actually making loan application because a true loan application can't be submitted until we have the address of the property. So the loan application required by paragraph one of form 22A must be made after mutual acceptance has to be made within five days. Buyer goes and makes their loan application. If when buyer is meeting with the lender, lender says, you know what, you mark the box for conventional, but honestly, you're going to have a greater chance of success getting an FHA loan. I recommend that you apply for an FHA loan instead of the conventional. Then buyer, buyer brokers, that buyer is going to have to, with seller's permission, revise the financing contingency before they do that. Or maybe the buyer makes a loan application for both a conventional loan and an FHA loan, even though the only box marked is conventional. If that happens, buyer is going to have to see that conventional loan application all the way through to a declination unless they have revised the Form 22A to identify that buyer will in fact be relying on the FHA loan instead. Why? Let me give you a, some background understanding of what the financing contingency actually says. The financing contingency says that buyer will have a legal excuse for failing to perform the terms of the purchase and sale agreement if and only if buyer, notwithstanding a good faith effort to obtain the loan, is unable to obtain the loan identified on the financing addendum. That means buyer's financing contingency is dependent upon buyer being declined for the financing type identified on the Form 22A. So buyer can never, without seller's permission, unilaterally switch from the identified type of financing to any other type of financing and still retain the benefit of their financing contingency. That same lesson applies to the amount of down payment. If buyer has identified that they will put 10% down 
and they go and they talk to their lender and the lender says, you know what, you could get by with less down than 10%. You could, you could just put down 5% and still qualify for this loan. And buyer says, oh yeah, I like that idea because now I have money to buy new curtains for the house if I do that. And then it turns out that buyer can't get financing. Buyer's not going to recover their earnest money. Buyer no longer has a legal excuse for failing to perform the terms of the agreement because buyer's legal excuse required buyer to be declined after making a good faith effort to obtain the loan identified on the Form 22A. In our example, that would be a conventional loan with 10% down. Follow-up question that often comes at this point is, could the buyer agree to put more down than what they've identified on Form 22A? And the answer to that question is, sure because that doesn't make it any less likely buyer is going to get their loan. In fact, putting more down in, enhances the chance that buyer is going to get their loan. So if buyer says I'm going to put down 10%, that's what buyer and seller agree on the Form 22A, and then buyer working with lender says, you know, I really want to put down 20% so my payments are lower, that's fine. But buyer can't unilaterally choose to put down less than the 10% identified on the Form 22A, buyer must first get seller's permission before they make that change to either the type of loan or the amount of down payment. The final part of paragraph one that we want to talk about is the fact that if buyer switches the lender after more than five days following mutual acceptance, then buyer must get seller's permission before they switch lender. Listing brokers, here's something I want you to know about the financing contingency. Many of you believe that buyer is obligated to use the lender who authored buyer's pre-approval letter. In other words, buyer makes an offer and buyer includes with that offer a letter from a lender saying the buyer's qualified to make this purchase. Many of you believe that buyer has an obligation to use that lender to make loan application. And in fact, that might even be, be important to the seller because if the seller or the listing broker has confidence in that particular lender, they might give the nod to that buyer in a competitive market situation over a buyer who's using an unknown lender, for example. Listing brokers, be aware, nothing in the statewide forms obligates the buyer to use the lender who wrote the pre-approval letter. If that is important to your seller, you are going to have to write language into the Form 22A or the financing contingency obligating buyer to actually utilize the services of that lender uh, to, to pursue the loan all the way through the point of declination if that happens and make buyer's recovery of earnest money become dependent upon that letter of declination being written by the same lender who authored the buyer's pre-approval letter. If you have questions on this topic or any others, send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.